Okay, so today we're going to talk about toxicology, a cornerstone field in environmental health. Toxicology is also known as the science of the poisons. The field of toxicology has a long history and poisons have been used for many purposes, such as making weapons, antivenoms, and medicines. Or for example, in 400 AD, Romans used poisons for execution. So uh, the study of poisons developed across centuries and today we have modern toxicology which intersects with so many disciplines such as biology, chemistry, and epidemiology. So uh, toxicology helps us to learn hazards associated with the chemicals and to assess the risk of exposure to chemicals. In other words, it helps us to understand at uh, what level of exposure uh, chemicals can be dangerous. So uh, today in the first part of the lecture we will talk about basic concepts and terminologies in toxicology uh, such as definition, importance, uh, basic assumption, toxicity, toxin and several case studies. Then we will talk about major concepts and principles in toxicology. What is those, uh, the factors to describe uh, the effects of those, those response relationship for an individual and population, lethal dose, and finally we'll uh, learn the most important determinant factors in toxicity of chemicals such as routes and site of entry, duration of exposure, and individual susceptibility. First of all, uh, you should know that toxics are very close to us and can affect our everyday life for example, in the year 2005, the state of California wanted to put a warning label on French fries because however fries are one of the uh, favorite foods in the US, they are soaked with trans fats, sodium and simple carbs that has caused cancer in laboratory for rats and mice. Another example is fish. Although it seems to be one of the healthiest food, you can eat some types of fishes uh, such as swordfish or tuna can contain high level of mercury which can cause adverse health impacts such as Alzheimer, uh, Parkinson or, uh, and depression. Another example is uh, lawn pesticide which is mainly used for killing insects but can be very harmful especially for pets and children. So we can see that toxic chemicals are very close to our life and can affect us every day. So uh, now let's see the definition of toxicology. What is toxicology? Well, there are two definitions for toxicology, traditional and modern definition. According to a classic or tradition definition, uh, toxicology is the science of poisons. But uh, a more comprehensive or modern definition of toxicology is the study of adverse effects of chemical on uh, living organism. So the science of toxicology is not restricted to the study of the adverse effects of chemicals on human, it can be uh, applied to other species and organisms like animals uh, in wildlife or even plants. Uh, toxicology is a very broad uh, field of study which intersects with so many fields. Uh, there are several specializations with, within toxicology such as descriptive toxicology to assess and test different toxic chemicals or forensic toxicology, they investigate presence of poisons or toxic chemicals in crime analysis, and environmental toxicology, uh, which is the effect of the toxic chemicals in environmental health problems. Uh, let's see an example which shows why toxicology can be important to the field of environmental health. According to the National Toxicology Program, NTP, which is part of NIH or National Institute of Health and is responsible for evaluating the toxic chemicals on the human health. Uh, more than 80,000 chemicals have been registered for use in the United States. It is estimated that each year almost 2,000 new chemicals are introduced for use in everyday items such as in foods, personal care products, prescription drugs, household cleaner and lawn care products. So the problem is we don't know the effects of many of these new chemicals on our health, but we may be exposed during manufacturing, 
distributing, using, and disposing or when they become pollutant in air, water, or soil. Fortunately, relatively few chemicals can pose a significant risk to human health. And uh, understanding toxicology of these chemicals indicates identifying both the effects of these chemicals and at what level of exposure they may be become uh, hazardous to humans. Another example, uh, a case study indicates uh, the advantage of reduction of blood that level in, to the uh, United States economy from 1976 to 1999. In this figure, this uh, red line uh, shows that blood lead concentration in U.S. residents constantly decreased from 1976 to 1999. Uh, the consequence of blood lead level reduction was that on average children in late 19th had IQs 2.2 to almost 5 points uh, higher compared to the children in 70s. The increase in IQ is uh, estimated about 2% increase in workers' productivity. Consequently, it brought uh, benefits between 100 to $300 billion for the country every year. That's an example of showing the benefit of toxicology of chemicals to the economy. Uh, okay, we learned what is toxicology and what is imp the importance of toxicology as an example for economy. But who are toxicologists? A toxicologist is a scientist who has received extensive training in order to investigate the adverse effects of chemicals to the living organism and uh, assess the probability of their occurrence. In other words, uh, toxicologists assess the levels of exposure that chemicals uh, may become hazardous to humans. Some of the health effects of exposure to chemicals are carcinogenesis, which means initiation of cancer. Previous researchers uh, have shown that exposure to toxic chemicals such as some trace metals and pesticides have been uh, associated with several types of cancer, such as lung, breast, and prostate, and some form of skin cancer and leukemia. Other health effects of exposure to chemicals are serious damages to internal organs like brain, kidney, or to the developing fetus and to the reproductive system. Uh, an important assumption in toxicology is that all substances are poisons. There is none that is not a poison. Uh, the right dose differentiates a poison from a remedy. So basically all chemicals have the potential to produce uh, toxic effects such as injury or death uh, depending on the amount of toxic chemicals ingested uh, injected or inhaled. Uh, for example, ingestion of large amount of water which has low toxicity can produce water intoxication. Another example is sodium chloride or salt. Uh, when there is too much sodium in the bloodstream, water rushes out of our cells to dilute it, uh, which damages or, or devastates most cells like brain cells. Or uh, some chemicals can be toxic in a small and tiny doses, like botulinum uh, toxin, which is used in Botox to reduce wrinkles and make you feel younger. So Botox is actually a poison that prevents muscles from mo moving. Environmental toxicology is a specialization in toxicology and is the study of the effects of chemicals on human health and the environment. So uh, let's see an exam. Let's see an application of environmental toxicology called uh, red tide. In coastal areas, maybe you have seen that the color of water is reddish or orange. Uh, this is because of massive growth of algae that discolors coastal water and deplete oxygen in the water. It is highly toxic and can kill so many animals. It is also very harmful and even fatal for humans. Some technologies like remote sensing can help in tracking and monitoring harmful algae. That's an example of environmental toxicology. Another important term in uh, toxicology is toxicity. And toxicity is defined as the degree to which something is poisonous. Toxicity depends on the physical and chemical properties and also the nature of substances. For example, some chemicals have low innate toxicity, uh, such as ethyl alcohol, which is found in cider, beer, and wine, 
and other examples are uh, salts, sodium, chloride, and uh, water. Uh, water has very low toxicity, but if you drink large amount of water, it can produce water intoxication, which can damage your brain. On the other hand, uh, some substances have uh, high toxicity, such as dioxin and botulinum. Uh, so toxicity depends on the chemical properties. It is obvious that substances that have low uh, toxicity must be ingested in large amounts in order to in order for them to have toxic effects such as water and salt. In contrast, injection with a small amount of highly toxic substances such as some spider venom may be sufficient to cause severe damages to the body or even death. So the venom from the uh, bite of a black widow uh, spider shown in this figure can cause serious illness, but usually doesn't result in death. Another definition in toxicology is toxin, and uh, a toxin, first of all, is a toxic substance, is poisonous, and is uh, made by living organism, including plants and animals, especially reptiles, insects, and also microorganisms such as bacteria, virus, fungi. So uh, some mushrooms are toxin. Here is a list of the highly uh, poisonous mushrooms. Now let's see a case study of nicotine poisoning, uh, which is a plant origin toxin of ground beef. Uh, in Michigan in early 2003, some supermarket customers uh, fell ill after consuming ground beef. The customers reported some symptoms like nausea, uh, vomiting, dizziness, and in one case, irregular heartbeat. Uh, samples of ground beef of the supermarkets were tested at the regional medical center and found to have high level of nicotine, which is a toxin derived from tobacco, which is a plant. Uh, epidemiologists interviewed the, victim, uh, the victims in order to examine the range of symptoms, which were uh, the symptoms were consistent with nicotine poisoning. Finally, legal investigations led to the arrest of a store employee, he was accused of putting nicotine into 200 pounds of meat that was later purchased by customers. So that was a case study of poisoning because of plant origin toxin. Now let's move on to the second module of lecture, which is the concept of dose uh, response relationship. Dose response relationship is a key concept in toxicology and is used to test causality. Uh, the term dose uh, refers to the amount of substance taken at one time. In practice, dose often is expressed as a concentration of a substance in the body, like the concentration per milliliter of blood. In Sacramento, California, there was a water drinking contest called Hold Your V for a V. Uh, they wanted to see how much water people could drink without going to the bathroom. In this contest, a woman drank almost two gallons of water and died after six hours. So what do you think uh, the reason of this was? The reason was water intoxication. As you know, water intoxication causes serious damages to the brain. The excess water dilutes blood sodium level and uh, causes fluids to move inside uh, body cells. Uh, this table uh, shows that substance can be both beneficial and poisonous to our body. For instance, lower doses of aspirin can be beneficial, like 300 to 1000 milligram, but higher doses are toxic between 1000 and 30,000 milligram, right? Oxygen, for example, normal uh, oxygen level in the air is almost 20%, but uh, 50 to 80% oxygen can be toxic. For vitamin A, you can see deficiency of vitamin A is uh, associated with uh, blindness, uh, dry skin, and increased risk of infection. Uh, on the other hand, high amount of or high dose of vitamin A can cause adverse effects such as anemia, uh, nose bleeding and muscle and joint pain. So too low and too high dose can cause adverse effects. 
Uh, some factors or parameters are used to describe the effect of a dose. The first one is total dose. As we know, according to the assumption of toxicology, all chemicals have the potential to become toxic. It is the matter of dose, which is evident that the larger amount of uh, substances can make them toxic, such as water, salts, and uh, ethyl alcohol. Uh, the second one is the time period during which the dosing occurs. Consider chemical A that is fatal with 150 mg per weight. If we broke down this dose to three equal doses, 50, 50, and 50, and take them over time, it may no longer be fatal. So when, the, when a dose is fractioned or broken up over a period of time, the effects may uh, be different from when a dose is administered uh, all at one time. The third one is... Uh, the body size of the subject. Uh, young children are more affected by the dose as the proportion of the dose to body weight for young children is larger than adults uh, who are given the same uh, dose. So that's why doctors prescribe smaller pills or half of a pill to children. Uh, dose response relationship is a correlative relationship between exposure to dose and health outcome or response. In other words, if we increase or decrease exposure uh, or dose, uh, dose response relationship investigates whether it leads to a systematic change in health outcome or not. If we find the dose response relationship between exposure and outcome, it indicates causality and we can find minimum dose to produce biological effects. So how we can study those response relationships uh, using a graph that describes when there is increase or decrease exposure or dose, there is also systematic change in health outcome for living organisms such as animals. Uh, there are two types of dose response curves. Uh, you can investigate the effect of exposure to dose on a single individual or uh, a single animal, or you can investigate the effect of exposure to dose on a population. Uh, let's uh, first see individual uh, dose response curve. Uh, this figure shows a typical dose response curve for an individual exposed to ethyl alcohol, which is alcohol found, found in uh, beer, cider, wine. You can see a gradual and systematic increase in ethyl alcohol uh, or dose uh, is associated with the increase in the responses right the effect can in ranges from no effect when the dose is zero to almost death when the dose is increased to a, a toxic level uh, how about a dose response relationship for a population here uh, the response can be measured as the percentage of exposed animals uh, showing a particular effect like mortality or it could uh, reflect uh, the effect in an individual subject. So uh, the population dose response curve which has a sigmoid shape or S shape uh, this is a cumulative percentage response curve we systematically and gradually increase the dose and uh, uh, investigate what percentage of animals have a specific uh, health effect such as mortality. So we can estimate uh, the dose that kills 10%. So 10% of animal is killed, and then we can find the dose that kills 10% of animal. And uh, this, uh, this is called uh, lethal dose 10, or LD10. So this is LD10. Uh, we can uh, estimate the dose that kills 50% of population of animals, also known as uh, lethal dose 50 or LD50. And uh, so we can, and we can also estimate the LD90 from the uh, population dose response curve. So uh, LD50 or lethal dose 50, uh, which is a dosage uh, milligram per kilogram body weight that kills 50% of exposed animal, and it can be used to compare toxicity of chemicals. Let's say you have two chemicals that kill. 50% of animals, they have the same LD50. Uh, but uh, for chemical A, we use one milligram, but for chemical B, 
a hundred milligram uh, is used so uh, you can uh, conclude that chemical A is more toxic uh, again LD10 uh, shows uh, the dosage that kills 10% of population and LD90 shows a dosage that uh, kills 90% of population of animals so it, it can be used for comparison uh, between comparison of the toxic toxicities of chemicals in this table you can see that uh, we can use LD50 uh, to compare uh, between substances for instance, LD50 for ethyl alcohol is 10,000 milligram per kilogram of body weight uh, for a specific population. So uh, for a specific population, 10,000 milligram of ethyl alcohol kills 50% of them. But only one milligram uh, per body weight of nicotine can kill 50% of the population. And uh, dioxin... Uh, which is an uh, botulinum uh, are very toxic here only a very a small fraction of them can kill 50% of population so as uh, you can see as we move uh, down to this table the chemicals become more toxic you may have heard uh, in the news about the former president of Ukraine uh, who was poisoned by dioxin he was campaigning in an election against a Russian backed candidate. You can see the disfiguring effects of dioxin, which is a highly uh, toxic and carcinogen chemical. Uh, let's take a deeper look at uh, dose response relationship curve. At the beginning of uh, this S or sigmoid curve, there is a flat portion uh, suggesting that at low levels, an increase in dosage uh, produces no effect. Uh, this is also known as sub-threshold phase. Uh, the term threshold here refers to the lowest dose at which a particular uh, response may occur. After the, tr uh, the threshold is reached, uh, the curve rises steeply uh, and then progresses to a linear phase, uh, where when you increase the dose, you can see an increase in the response. Uh, when the maximum response is reached, the curve uh, flattens out and uh, this dose response relationship is one of the indicators that uh, is used to assess a causal uh, effect of a suspected exposure upon a health outcome it should be noted that it is unclear whether exposure to toxic chemicals at sub-threshold uh, phase uh, may produce any health response uh, in the last module, let's talk about determining factors in toxicity of chemicals. Uh, toxicity of chemicals in body uh, depends on several factors, route and site of entry, duration of exposure, interaction or mixture of chemicals, and finally, individual susceptibility. Uh, let's talk about each factor one by one. Uh, chemicals can enter our body intentionally or unintentionally. Intentionally, such as by medical interventions like injections into bloodstream, and unintentionally, like injuries or environmental exposure to pesticide or air pollution. A route of exposure can be uh, by ingesting chemicals like consumption of uh, contaminated food or contaminated drink. Uh, by injection, uh, by injecting into the bloodstream, which has the fastest effect, uh, by contact with the surface of the skin, uh, which is topical or local mode and doesn't have an impact to the entire body, and by inhalation, uh, which we breathe uh, contaminated air, potentially dangerous particles and gases may enter our bodies and then can be absorbed into the bloodstream. Uh, here we can uh, also see some routes of exposure to chemicals, ingesting water and food, injection, bite of mosquitoes and ticks, inhaling pesticide, or contact with, this, uh, or contact with a skin which has a topical or local mode. 
speed of effect of chemicals whether chemical quickly impacts your body or has slow effects on your body depends on the route of exposure direct injection into bloodstream or veins has the uh, f- has the fastest and strongest effect than inhaling contaminated air and the lowest speed of effect is through skin uh, because uh, the skin acts as a protective barrier uh, it's also had a uh, local effect uh, the second uh, factor that determines toxicity of chemicals in body is the length and duration of exposure uh, which varies from single exposure short-term exposure and heavy and long-term exposure for example uh, some agricultural workers receive exposure to pesticide uh, in greater concentration and over a long period uh, than the general population. Uh, length and duration of exposure can be acute or chronic. Acute exposure usually produce acute effects and disappear rapidly. Acute exposure is normally a single exposure for less than a day. Uh, we also have subacute, which is repeated exposure, but at most for one month. On the other hand, chronic exposure may allow for um, the buildup of effects over time uh, with the resulting accumulation of biological damages. Uh, chronic exposure is normally repeated for more than three months. We also have subchronic, which is repeated exposure, but for one to three months. Uh, the third factor that can determine the toxicity of chemical in body is mixture of chemicals. Most studies look at one chemical, but in reality we are exposed to chemical mixtures. For example, automobile uh, exhaust is a, a combination of carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, particulate matter, and so many other particles. So uh, toxicologists have observe that when chemicals mix, uh, they may produce surprising effects. Sometimes their uh, combined effect may be greater, sometimes less than expected. Uh, When we expose to two or more chemicals, uh, their combined effects may be additive, synergistic, antagonistic. Additive effects means uh, that the combination of two chemicals produce an effect that is equal to their individual effects added together. Uh, Here, for example, we have additive effect. 20% for the chemical A, 30% for chemical B, and the combined effect equals to the uh, uh, sum of the individual effects. Uh, The second one is synergistic effect. In the case that the combined effect of exposure to two or more chemical is uh, greater than the sum of their individual effects. The real world example is the interaction between asbestos and smoking which causes lung cancer. Here we have a synergistic effect. So the first one has 5% effect, the second one 10%, but the combination is 100% effect. So that's the synergistic effect. Uh, The combination is greater than the sum of the individual effects. And uh, also we have antagonism uh, effect, which is the opposite of synergistic. And for the, uh, for the antagonism effect, uh, the combined effect of exposure is uh, less than uh, the individual uh, effect. Okay, so here, for example, we have uh, 20% for chemical A, 30% chemical B, but the combination is only 5%. Real world example is uh, sub- some supplemental vitamins that may reduce the effects of prescription medicine, such as antibiotics. And uh, finally, the last factor that can determine toxicity of chemicals in body is individual susceptibility or sensitivity. The responses of individual to toxic substances can vary greatly, uh, ranging from no response to severe response. Responses may vary according to age, uh, according to sex, race, and health status. Responses may vary according to the personal genetic backgrounds, use of medication, consumption of alcohol, and pregnancy status. Some chemicals like bee venom 
uh, produce severe or life-threatening reactions in persons aff affected with allergies. Uh, in terms of age, uh, it's obvious that uh, young children under three to four years are more susceptible to exposure to uh, toxic chemicals.